on my way to the Jars Center here. I'm going to take a tour and uh, see what Jars is all about. No, sorry. <laughs> place you can buy Jars. Um, it stands for Jungle Aviation and Radio Service. And that's because in the very beginning, in our first field of Mexico, which that's the first field that Wycliffe worked in, um, we didn't have any of those kind of services, and the translators would come and pack up all their stuff and then take off and go by foot or donkey or a small boat out to their places of work and, and then start their work. But nobody would hear anything from them for the next four or five months until they came out again. Well, in about 1917, Cameron Townsend was in college, and he and a good friend of his felt that God wanted them to go over to Guatemala and sell Spanish Bibles. And so they packed up their things and their Bibles and took off and went to Guatemala, and they traveled all around the country, and when they were in the cities and towns, they did very well. They would stand on the sidewalks and tell Bible stories, and then uh, people would gather around, and then they would um, tell they would listen to the stories and then buy the Bibles. And so uh, that went well. But when they got out to the countryside and the isolated villages, they would stand on the roadside and tell the Bible stories, and people would come up. Then they just walked away, and they didn't buy any Bibles. And um, Uncle Cam wondered why, and he asked his interpreter. And the interpreter said, well, these people don't speak Spanish nor do they read and write, so they don't have any use for a Spanish Bible. And so um, he continued traveling among the Indian groups, and one of them called the Ketchikel, when he was talking to them, he realized that what they thought was, well, if God is so great, why doesn't he speak our language? Why does he just speak Spanish? And of course, Uncle Cam knew that God speaks those people's language. He probably invented the precursor at the Tower of Babel. But they didn't have any way to know because God's word was not in their mother tongue that they understood. And so from that, he got okay. the burden to translate the Bible for these minority groups okay. who might live in a country where the Bible's in the major language, like Spanish or German or English, but they don't understand that major language well enough to really know what God is saying to them. And so he and his wife moved in with the Ketchikel Indians and they learned their language and their culture, and then they translated the New Testament into their language. And so after about 10 years, God did speak their language, and they knew what he was saying to them. The book that he did is over here in this cabinet. <coughs> it's a little hard to see, but we finished it in 1931. And if you could see it close up, you would see that it's what we call a diglot which means that it's Ketchikel on one side and Spanish on the other. And that was so that the tribal people could learn Spanish. And if they could learn Spanish, then they could get higher education and better jobs. So